Okay, use Gorilla Finances if you want to be able to pull in all your transactions and see all the different types of charges and fees in your Seller Central account. You can also filter down by SKU. So if you want to do a cost analysis of a particular SKU and see how much Amazon is charging you for that, you can. Um, so refer to the documentation. It's always the most up-to-date, even more up-to-date than this video. Uh, because by the time this video comes out and later on, we may have added extra features, extra filters. The main thing to understand is that finances is an advanced function formula. So make sure you watch this video to the end if you really want to see how to utilize it to the best possible method. I'm going to be creating something like this where I have all these charges. I have it split up into two sections, one for charges and one for fees. So I've got it also color coordinated so that when I look at it, I know that blue is charges, orange is fees. Up the top here, you see all the different time periods that we offer. Uh, these are just preset periods. You can manually enter a, end, a start date and an end date. So let's say later on, if I as I go through the examples, I want to do something for like, want to pull in something for 2021 January 03, and the end date is going to be 2021 01 11. So I know strange date, but let's say you did a promotion between the third and the eleventh, and you want to see how it did, how much you spent, etc. You can also enter, because everything is so dynamic and it's very flexible, let's say I want to use this for a SKU or an ASIN um, and I'll, to see how you can build the formulas out. If you haven't seen the video on pulling in your different charge types and the fee types, highly recommend it because then um, it will make it easier for you to see how you can actually get all of these categories. What I did is, let me go over to the right side. I've already pulled it in. And it's as easy as doing gorilla underscore charge type. My US account, all of these are optional. So I've just did comma, 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 comma. Um, use semicolon if you're in Europe based on your locale settings. And I only want the last parameter. And the reason for leaving all of these empty and going to the last one is because I want to limit the, the um, categories or the the types of charges based on the event type. In this case, it's a shipment event. So all the charges related to shipment on my account, I want to know what they are. So this is what that formula will pull in right here. And it's the same thing as here, except the final list will bring it up in alphabetical order, whereas the selling price right here is for FBM, FBA, etc. I want to put this at the top, right? So that's where I just reorganized it and um, copied and pasted it onto the left side here. And it's the same thing with the other ones, like refunded related charges. I did the exact same formula where I did charge type for the US and get straight to the event type here um, and entered refund, etc. So all the way down, I get all of my different charges associated with uh, my Seller Central account. You can do it by month. So uh, you can do the format, refer to the documentation on how you can enter the different date formats. We use the US system date because there's so many different variations in dates. We just went with the US. So it's year, 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 dash, month, month. And if you want to do it like that, if you want to get a month by month, the different presets, I've created a drop down just to make it easy. So what I did here is pretty much created a data, data validation. And then the range that I selected, I already have a bunch of date ranges here. So I copied and pasted all the different ranges, the different types of preset dates that we have. Like here, from top to bottom, OK, save. And that's how you create a drop down list. But you can also do it so that it supports um, custom dates like with a start and an end date. So let's start with the most full formula. Uh, with using a custom date period as opposed to just a preset. Okay, Gorilla, Finances. If I want to use a custom date, I have to select custom. So I can either select this because, okay, let me cancel that first. I'm going to select custom or I can manually type it in. But because I want to make it as dynamic as possible, 
I'm going to select it here and then I'm going to use that and link it up in the formula. So Gorilla Finances period. So the first section is the period. So I'm going to do the custom. Okay. I'm going to do comma to move to the next one. Again, remember if you're in UK, Europe, or not UK, if you're in Europe, use semicolon. And the type. So what type of data am I looking for? I want to grab the range of all the different, so the type is a different, the type of charges. So I want to grab everything from A6 to A22. And I'm going to press F4 to lock the reference in so that when I drag it's not going to move and shift columns around comma the event is a shipment so again same thing click on that F4 to lock it in comma marketplace I want it for the US okay lock that in comma skew if I wanted to drill down into one skew I could for example click on this but for this example, I'm not going to be entering any SKUs. If you want, you know how to do it. Just um, plug it in. Comma to skip that. And then the start date, I that's I entered it here, as you saw in the um, beginning. So I do, I can either lock it in if I don't want to start, um, if I don't want to move dates around. Or if you want to do, say, go sideways, don't lock in the dates. And the end date, close the formula. So I'm, and this will, pull all the data from January 3rd to January 11th. So imagine trying to do this with within Seller Central. It's just going to be a nightmare, right? You'll never get anywhere. Um, and by the time you do it, it will take forever just to, it will take it like hours if, you want to, if you're trying to get it for all different categories and get summaries, etc. So it gives you so much customization and that's where the advanced feature is. Because it offers so much customization, it can get overwhelming. So to keep it as simple as possible, I'm going to delete this formula. Let's say I want 2021-01, so January of 2021. 2021-01, okay. And I will do Gorilla Finances, okay. That, comma, the different types, okay. I'm going to lock that in again. F4. Okay, the event is the shipment. So A5, F4, comma, for the US marketplace, comma, and everything else I don't need. So I'm just going to delete that last comma, close the formula, and now it will load in everything for January of 2021. So this is how you would be able to do it. And by doing so, like if I were to now, it should work where if I delete, say, all of this, and you can see by using a range, it loads everything in bulk and it loads everything very quickly. If I want to, say, drag it across to get, um, let's see, there's an error. So the error is, okay, I shifted it. So this is the problem if you don't lock in references. So I shifted the marketplace. So A1, this last one, I should have done F4 so that regardless of if I shift left, right up down it's going to stay on a one for marketplace so do that and then if i hold and shift it to the right it will now automatically pull boom all of the information for this period and then same thing this period this period everything is correct like you can see all the references and all the charges have stayed us marketplace has stayed in place so the, as long as you get the prep correct and you have an idea of how you want to lay out the data, the formula will just populate everything extremely quickly. It's just getting those bits and pieces into place, locking it in at the right place in order to create the statement, the view that you want. So this is for a period, month by month period. If I want to do last year, you know, I could do last year. Yeah, it's one of our preset periods. So if I want to do last year, I could just enter that and then everything will update dynamically. If I want to do, say, something like this year, we have that as a preset period as well. And that will update everything dynamically. And because even all of these bottom ones down here, like all these different categories here, I've hooked up the formula so that 
it all locks in onto the same period at the top. So if I, in the beginning, like you saw me updating this, all the information on this, but what you didn't notice was that everything, because it's all hooked up together, like if I'm looking at all these adjustments, let's say I want to look up last year. You can see everything on this column went blank and then pretty much repopulated everything with the matching period. And so even on the fees section, same thing. All the fees, all the finances, um, all the commissions, refunds, all the chargebacks, everything. So all the information associated with your account, you can build a month-by-month -month analysis like this. Great for accounting, great for bookkeeping. One thing I do mention is that this is not an accounting, purely accounting tool in the sense that we only get the data, install the data on a going forward basis. What that means is if today is, say, 2021 February and you signed up in January, we're only going to be able to pull the, the historical information one time and then on a going forward basis, we will continually download an update. But if you had a customer return or you had to reconcile all the statements or something happened where the finances from like three months back or four months back changed, we are not going to go back and update every single transaction just to reconcile that one or two different transaction. Um, so it's only on a going forward basis. Okay, let's see what else. On the, a lot of people ask us, how can you add your own cogs or other expenses and create a more outside of Amazon profit and loss as well? And the way to do that is, again, it's Excel or it's a spreadsheet. So it's extremely flexible, extremely customizable. These three columns I added here just by doing, say, insert new rows. So let me delete it and show you what I did. Delete it, and everything below is that updates because the reference has changed. But let's say I want to, and you can see how quickly everything, like we're getting like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of data points at the moment, but it's pretty much getting it for every different period. What I want to do is though insert three rows above, and I'm going to change the color of this to yellow, where I, use, I like to use yellow for input related stuff. And then I change the font to blue for any inputs. And let's say I want to say get the sum of this. And then let's say I have expense one. It could be your storage cost, lease cost, etc. Um, or some other cogs like this. You could do the sum of say all of this. Okay, so I get the total sum. And then if I get the, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this and then uh, net because that's pretty much what a lot of people want. How do you create a operating profit calculation or net profit? So let's say my expense for, say, this month was outside all the different cogs was this. And then I could do this plus that since it's already a negative. And you'll get your net. So you can see how you can create a um, very detailed expanded financial statement. You can create a consolidated version if you want. I've shown you the example where I'm pulling in everything based on different events and splitting it up into different say segments or categories. But if I wanted to just have everything in just one big shot I don't care about, say, all of these breaking it down. What I can do is, and, and I'm going to go move over to the right. Let me just get rid of some formatting. Okay. What I can do is then gorilla charge type. And I'm not even going to enter anything. I'm just going to grab this and this will pull all the information for my main marketplace, for my main seller account. Okay, give it a few seconds as it goes in, crunches, calculates everything and pulls up all the different charges associated with my account. So from here, let me just do that. So everything here, here, okay. 
And if I now do say 2021 equals gorilla underscore finances, I'm going to do 2021 comma and type. I'm just going to do all of this. Just grab everything, big range, comma. Actually, no, I don't need anything else. That's all I need. The period and the different um, different categories that I want. And it will pull in the consolidated, summarized, and um, automatically calculated full one for you. And then you can just rearrange how you want to display the information, etc. Because like I said, like sales is down the bottom here because it's in alphabetic order. So you could get a very simple consolidated view where all of this contains like all the um, the refunds and the charges where instead of splitting it up two, three times, you can just see it in one shot. For example, like this selling price principle up the top here. And then in refund, there's also like selling price principle. But if you don't want to, uh, if you don't care about breaking it down by a month or by different sections, just use what I did here. Charge type, list everything. And then you can just use the most basic version where you enter the period and the different charges. By looking at the description box, you'll see that there's only two required. So which is exactly the period and the charge type. And you can build it out like that. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and good luck.